So the foul winter's lie has returned, but before you can get your hands on it, nine gazillion public events have to be completed. I mean, this is a joke, right? How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and today I'll bring you another Destiny 2 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. So the other day, I uploaded a video on why I quit playing and posting about Destiny 2. Now initially when I sat there recording that video, I didn't think for a single second that going back to that video a few days later, that so so many people agreed with what I was saying about the state of the game. This actually took me by surprise and put a massive smile on my face, because if that video was uploaded around the time I stopped playing the game, which was the last year, the hate I would have got would have been unreal, so I kind of expected the same. But no, it seems as though many, many of you guys are now feeling the exact same as I do in terms of the way Bungie are going about their business. Now I promised to myself I wouldn't get back into that destiny cycle of playing that game again. Same content for the same rewards which reflects on one's personality in a negative way. And that's something I ain't doing. Nor am I posting another video bitching about Bungie and their means of content. We're actually sitting here recording this, going back over what we've learned over the past couple of days that may not be a true statement. Today we will state facts. Today I will look back at earlier today and yesterday and I will tell you a couple of hard truths about Destiny 2 as a game. Now I am doing this for the sole reason of looking back on my last D2 video and people stating things like it's about time someone told the truth and DPJ being one of a few Destiny 2 content creators who never brown nosed. And merely just for the fact you guys supported me on that last video, like nothing I can honestly remember Destiny 2 content creation wise on my behalf for a very very long time, maybe since those D1 days. So the Foul Winters lie. This original Iron Banner shotgun, was it Iron Banner? I'm pretty sure it was, first made its appearance in Destiny 1. And looking back people, I'm sure you would agree, it was a joke of a weapon back then. The weapon was originally a sniper shotgun and its capabilities destroyed an already unbalanced PvP even more. And let's not hate on Bungie here, trying to balance PvP in terms of taking everything each Guardian offers, adding supers into the equation, weapons, different playstyles and so much more. Trying to balance all of that is stupid hard and for the most part it hasn't been too crazy if I'm honest it could be way 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 worse. But every so often along comes a weapon which just utterly breaks the standard of balance. Now in no particular order in those D1 days we had the Sirius Regime, the Vex Mythal class, the Fawn, the Icebreaker, two tap hand cannons like the Palindrome, Hawkmoon, I even witnessed the Hawkmoon one tap somebody, the Charles Pulse Rifle, I can't remember its name, the Messenger, that's what I was thinking about, or was it the Messenger? I can't remember. Either way, that slow firing monster of a pulse, even the Ephrodite Spear, do you guys remember the sniper? Take it down to that last bullet people, I can't remember what the perk was called, it's been such a long time, but I know the last bullet of every clip did like extra damage, it was crazy. I should really research these things before making a video, but to be honest, those days are long behind me. All of these weapons were introduced along with many more, which were considered one way or another, game breaking, overpowered, I mean I heard many terms, many I myself spouted out. And what these items did was, and I covered this in a previous video, they were incorporated to change the balance of PvP, left there to brew, boiling a lot of the community's blood. Only to later be nerfed, in turn changing the entire dynamics and feel of PvP. This was something I feel Bungie did to make the game last way longer in terms of longevity, and this is something they still do to this day, as content releases on their behalf are far from the worst, but with a hungry community who Bungie just seem to just must keep feeding, feeding us bullshit sugar coated in icing does taste good for a bit, then we realise it's still just bullshit underneath. But yeah, on with another crazy incorporation and that was the Foul Winter's Lie. This shotgun changed the game, it really did. And what many people didn't realise at the time, which I quickly picked up on, was the after effects it had on the game, even when Bungie took it away from being that great great weapon it once was. So the Foul Winter's Lie it came, it conquered, Bungie nerfed it, but it's not forgotten, no pun intended. Back when it first arrived it was an utter monster, but after a while Bungie did nerf it and I think they took away shot package, no they didn't take away shot package, I think they stopped it rolling with a certain other perk, was it Hammer Forged or Range Finder? To be honest I can't remember, but I know it wasn't the same weapon it once was. But leaving it brewing the game for so long meant everyone was using it, I mean you had no choice to use it. You either used it or got abused by it. 
When it was taken away though, even though in my opinion it wasn't the craziest of OP weapons we saw, when they did take it away, people got so used to using shotguns and had adjusted to that kind of play style because it worked. We then saw an influx of shotgun users who latched onto many other shotguns. You remember the universal remote, I mean I absolutely love that thing. If I hadn't spent so much time using the Foul Winter's Lie, I probably would never have used a universal remote. It was an exotic shotgun which at one stage in my opinion was greater than a Foul Winter's Lie in terms of overall usage and abusage. Other shotguns too came along, and people were just searching for that one, that original, that feeling the Foul Winters gave them. But in my opinion it never really came back, like many originals. But it's still a weapon, even till this day everyone remembers, it's a cool classic so to speak. So come to the days of Destiny 2 which let's not be around a bush here, it's kind of in a dire state. One of the worst states I can actually remember, in fact it probably is the worst state Destiny 2 has been in. A time in which for the most part the game is either Lost Sector XP farming or bounty completing for Guardian games. Now the Foul Winters Lie has been a part of the game files for a long while now, so Bungie have indeed been planning to use it in times of need. Are they now in times of need? I'd say yes, yes indeed. What Bungie do and are smart about it is stretch out content to the fullest, giving them extra time to plan other things which do the same. They are the masters at this. So at a stage now of people just coming off the back of farming bounties for weeks for Guardian games, which I heard was hoed, they have now decided to add that back up card over that classic Foul Winter's Lie, a weapon all remember. A weapon they think everyone will get hyped about. A weapon they think everyone wants back. And it could indeed be the case. And a weapon they must have believed that even if it was locked behind a daft grind, people would still be happy to do said daft grind for the Foul Winters. Because it's the Foul Winters. That's where the issue now is. Bungie believes they can incorporate what in my opinion is a ridiculous community grind and lock a classic weapon behind it and people will be happy with this. And they think they can get away with it. Well they thought they could, because this quest has now changed, which we'll get into in a second. The thing is now guys, they are wrong. I mean yes some people are trying, some people are just dedicated, and my hat goes off to them, but many many others have woken up to the BS they are trying to pull here. Now I ain't been back on the game at all in months, but I have seen a constant flow of tweets by content creators which started out as praise and this community effort only for a few hours later to suddenly change their minds and agree with the majority of non brown nosing players like me and you and suddenly condemn Bungie for this appalling event. Now although I don't agree with brown nosing a company nor do I agree with people just following their general flow of feelings, I mean conduct your own opinion, stick to that opinion. If people don't like it, well f But changing opinions to suit isn't the right way of going about things, especially if you're a content creator, because people see straight through it. And it does indeed make you look like an idiot. But in saying that, even changing opinions from bad to good, depends how your opinion is of that opinion. In this case, and within the whole scale of the way Bungie incorporate things into the game, we can kinda let it off. Because these people have audiences, who for the most part support and back them. They will see that they are disagreeing with said incorporations, and the more this happens, the more upset people will get and the sooner Bungie will stop trying to pull their blankets over our heads. I mean, who at Bungie thought it was a good idea to incorporate this whole Foul Winters Light quest and lock it behind doing 9 million or so Seraph public events? And I mean, yes I'm fully aware they reduced the target number or added multipliers to completions. This they're not long announced. But this also adds to the point. The problem is people actually don't think now it's a certain individual at Bungie that's responsible for the rubbish being put out. I think the issue is on a much bigger scale. The issues it's brought on, surely, should have been foreseen. Who remembers the times Bungie split with Activision and everybody thought the future was bright? I mean everybody blamed Activision for the way things were. I know I did at the time. I was led to believe that Activision were the ones holding them back. And in some sense that's probably true. Now they've got all the time in the world to release content whenever they want. At least when Activision were a part of that team, they had time frames to meet. Well what do you think about that? Let me know down below. But yeah, the whole point they believe they can lock a classic weapon behind a stupid grind that probably won't be done is ludicrous. And the mentality behind said company to do this is one in my opinion which is questionable. Unless something like I've spoke about before is happening behind the scenes. I mean I've had a stupid long break from playing the game and to be honest I feel from both sides of the spectrum. On one hand we have a crazy hungry community who demand content, 
On the other hand, we have a company using all kinds of shortcuts to keep said community happy. Where does this end? I just honestly feel though that what we have been given with Destiny 2 is in an excuse. There were many, many business decisions put into place which have already backfired. And as we get deeper into the year, it seems as though more will come. Locking a weapon though behind 9 million public events just after incorporating a race of bounty completions is hilarious. And that's it now, looking at it from an outside perspective, what's happening is both hilarious and sad at the same time for both parties, the player and the producer. I just truly hope Bungie are indeed working on something major. I mean, I wouldn't say this excuses things that they do, but it would at least make some sense as to why things are the way they are. Maybe a new franchise, maybe a new Fall expansion, maybe Destiny 3. Something has to be in the works, because guys, if it isn't, like I said in my previous video, and I will say it again, there won't be a future for Destiny 2 if nothing is being created behind the scenes. People are, by the way, waking up to what's happening. Also, a quick note before we end, I was going to end stating that this Foul Winter's Quest would never be completed in time, but now they have up the ante in terms of progression and so much more, I think it might be, but even if it isn't, don't worry because I'm pretty sure this Foul Winter's lie you receive in the end. One way or another, it will be added into the loot pool. But even when you do receive said weapon, I don't think it will be that game changer it once was. Its time has passed and it won't be anything but a bit of nostalgia. And on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. I just wanted to upload a video giving you guys my thoughts over the past week of what's happened surrounding the game. I'm seeing more and more people stand up. I'm seeing more and more people shout out. And I think this is a good thing. But on that note, we have come to the end. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like, it really helps out. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.